Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 19 of my 3D printed scrap metal inspired Geiger Alien Xenomorph suit. I've got quite a long way with this suit, and last time I actually put most of the pieces on apart from the head because the ceilings are too low, and walked around, and in the previous two episodes I've been sorting out the stilts and the legs and the thighs and those pieces. So this time we're going to go around and fix up a few of the pieces that are missing, which includes the big curly tongue piece that should be above the dorsal tubes there, and a couple of other sections. And then we're going to talk about some electronics for lighting it. Here's the back of the suit, and I left some pilot holes here to put that tongue on. There's another piece here which should be another kind of uh, one of these dagger pieces that comes up the back of the spine there from the tail. So um, we can make an assembly to fit on there. Again, these, um, these are fixed on with bungees. So if they hit something, they just spring. So again, we're gonna take the same approach with a base and then a structure for that sort of back tongue piece. Uh, lots of these pieces are gonna get painted as will the Maplex board that's brown there so that we can get some consistency in color. Uh, we also need to make some little rib sections. I've currently got the front ribs held on with a piece of elastic and a dodgy aluminium bent piece of wire. So we're gonna, um, we've again left pilot holes in the side here to put some rib sections on. So um, let's have a look at some CAD for those. We'll get them printed out and see where we are. This is the CAD for the back tongue piece there that sits above the dorsal tubes. So the red plate on the left here is the existing plate. If we just hide that blue part, we can see the pilot holes there. So the um, initial blue piece there fits in quite nicely. It's got some pegs on the bottom, which you can hopefully see a line into that piece if we just hide the red plate. And um, that's basically got, in turn, its own holes so that um, we can attach bungees to it. In fact, a six mil piece of studding is gonna go through the holes in that piece. And that's braced, it's gonna be acetone welded on. And then the next piece will sit on that. Um, and that's gonna be the main structure for that big bendy tongue, which are these pieces cut into four in the foreground here. So they will make the structure, they won't fit on the bed, so I've cut them into two each. And they'll be acetone welded back to back. That will result in one peg, which is the curved piece sticking out on the left-hand side, and the corresponding hole to attach the bungee to. So that should sit in there and be braced quite nicely. Then my plan to um, build that structure out sideways is the next um, few sections over here. And those are going to be, um, basically, they've got ribs that stick out sideways, and then they've got cutouts so I can bend them and attach them onto that contour so they will stick out each side and be... Um, I probably won't have to heat them, I'm not sure if I will or not, but I can heat those with a hot air gun and, and bend them to fit them to the bendy tongue frame part. And the very furthest piece goes on the top and the bottom. So effectively we're building out this three-dimensional shape with a core in the middle and bendy ribs stuck on either side. Here are the pieces for that printed out. So we've got this block here with the keys on and I've just run around those with a file to make sure they fit properly into that back plate. So that will go on and be acetone welded onto the plate on the back of the suit. And then we've got these two pieces which are separated out and these lugs fit neatly in here and we can bungee that together so that um, if it gets knocked it's springy. So we need to fix these together. And then we've got the uh, top and bottom pieces which are quite flexible that I've printed and these pieces go down the side of these so we'll bend those into shape whoops and I'll fix that one back together as well I have stuck this one together so all those four sections are stuck together so the prints are back to back and obviously the seam lines are stuck together there so that will fit into this so now we need to um, try and shape these pieces around here the other one's quite flexible I'm not sure why the other one snapped um, but I'm actually going to heat it up with a hot air gun to permanently fix it in position to make sure we get that the right way up um, so that it takes to that contour and it's easier to stick on. So I'm just going to use the old hot air gun and I deliberately made those thinner sections in there so we can heat it and we can contour it. So that feels a bit more flexible. We'll just bend that in place and attempt to get it to stay there.
There is half of it stuck together, so I've got half of that piece attached. Um, the other part is still just gluing up where it snapped before. I'm not sure why that happens, but um, we'll just acetone weld that back together and give it the same treatment. And then I've got these top and bottom pieces which will go on the top and bottom like so, which also need to be stuck on. So it's all together, here it is. So we've got the um, thing there is just bungeed in. So I've got bungees either side going into bolts. So that's attached to its base, so it's flexible. So if I knock into something, it doesn't snap off. And we've got that piece I showed you before with the keys on that slots neatly in there. And in fact, it's such a good fit, I think I can push it in and it'll stay there. But obviously that gets acetone welded in. So while my chemical weld is going off, I've just got some clamps on there. We're going to have a look at the extra little bit of ribs that go in either side to meet the rib cage. As I said before, they're currently um, elastic on around the back. So we just need to make a little bridge rib section that holds this hole onto the front of the ribs there. This is the plan for the rib sections on the back at the side there. So the gold plate there is basically both pieces together, which consists of a flat plate and the blue ones are the two uh, spread out on the bed and, and made into opposites. So we've got a groove down the middle there and that's going to be heated with heat and bent like I did with some of the other parts to match the contour of your body. And the hook there will be acetone welded onto hook on the elastic of the front rib sections. Um, and obviously the hole is going to be velcroed onto the back panels. So this will make um, a nice piece that will hold those ribs in place. Then um, around here we've got two actual ribs which are going to stick in the space that's spare. So to the left of where that gold hook part is now. And I think I'll only be able to squeeze one in on each side, but it's under the arm so you won't really see it. But the aim is to carry round the rib cage into the back panels. Okay, here are those parts printed. So we've got these two opposite pieces for each side. We've got the hole there for the Velcro strap and a little clip that's going to be acetone welded on which the current elastic will hook onto each side which will make it much easier to get on. Um, well, this is gonna be bent as I said, so I've got that groove in there again so I can heat that with a hot air gun, bend it, and that will go around the contour and then I've got one little rib section for each one which just sits there. So these aren't gonna be seen much because they're under your arms, but um, Nonetheless, we might as well have that piece of detail there. And this is obviously bent to match the contour of this once it's been heated and bent, and that'll be acetone welded on as well. Okay, so you've probably seen enough hot air action for today. So I've bent those already and put them together. And they look pretty good. I've painted a bit of acetone over them to give them a bit of a shine. So we've got the elastic hook there, the Velcro hook there, and a little bit of rib there. So let's get those sorted and see what's next. So quite hard to see, but they're actually tucked away in here. So I've got one either side, and that's Velcroed on and elastic onto the front of the rib cage there. So it's just under the arm and gives a bit more detail. Um, obviously you can't really see it that much, but there we go. It's just in there. So I'm pretty sure it looks quite a lot like Alien. Uh, bear in mind the head sits um, higher on my head because my neck is longer than this mannequin. So the front of the head is further down and the whole thing is tipped. So there's a lot more space between that back tongue piece that I've put on there, which is quite springy and works quite well. So there's quite a lot of other fill-in sections to make, but I wanna do something quite special with those. I'd like to make those glow in green. So I'm gonna use a green translucent material called Tallman Tea Glass to print them. And I'm basically going to have lots of sort of coloured shapes that are green, that glow, all over the body. So it's a bit like um, glow sticks with LEDs in. So let's have a look at some materials and electronics for that. I've got some items on the table here. The first thing is a sample of Tallman Tea Glass. It's actually a vase that's been printed off Thingiverse. And this was sent to me by 3D Filler Print, which is where I get my filament from in the UK. And this is an example of red tea glass. It comes in green, blue and clear, so I'll be buying some green for the project. Um, this is quite a good um, material with good optical properties, so if we just shine a flashlight in, you can hopefully see that um, it illuminates quite well and the light refracts through it quite well. This isn't an ideal shape to demonstrate it because it gets bigger in the middle, but if I shine the uh, flashlight to the edge there, you can see it looks quite good. And it, um, Diffuses the light quite well to give even distribution. So this is the material I'm gonna to use to print lots of the parts now so they light up and they're gonna be in various shapes. 
So we've got um, an Arduino here, wired to an LED. I've got a single hyper bright white um, 10 mil LED, which runs on about 3.8 volts at 20 milliamps. And in fact, I've got 50 of them, which we can distribute throughout the suit. Uh, at the moment, I'm running that off an Arduino Uno. And we'll have a look at the code in a moment. And um, next to it, I've got an Arduino Nano, which is probably what I'm going to use because they're so much smaller. And I can distribute these around the suit so we don't need lots of wires connecting everything together. These are also quite cheap. You can pick them up on eBay for not too much money. So at the moment I've got one LED attached with one resistor and it's just connected to one of the PWM pins and I've got the very simple fade code to make that LED fade up and down. Hopefully you can see that. So those are pretty bright. I'm trying to point that straight into the camera. So that's just fading up and down um, from zero to max. So let's have a look at the code from that and then we'll discuss what's going to happen next. The code I was running there is the standard Arduino Fade tutorial which you can find really easily by googling Arduino Fade. And um, this is the actual Arduino website. It tells you exactly what to do. There's the Arduino Uno and um, it's got the wiring diagram there with one LED and one resistor. So um, the code here um, is basically available for you to copy and paste into your Arduino development environment, uh, which I've already done, and, and here it is. So um, basically what it does is defines an LED pin, which I've got on nine, and it has to be one of the PWM pins, of which there are about six on an Arduino Uno, and that's so you can use pulse width modulation to fade the LED up and down. So um, the initial brightness is zero, and also we've got an increment amount of five, uh, which is how many points it'll fade on each loop, um, which is basically a number that gets added or taken away from the initial brightness. So um, in our main function here, we've got um, setting the LED pin as an output, and then we've got a loop. And it's very simple, in fact. It does an analog write to the LED pin, which, as we remember, is pin 9 in this case, and it writes the brightness value. Um, and then it basically adds each time, makes that brightness value um, another value, plus the fade amount, which was 5. So it adds 5 to it on each loop. Um, to fade it up. Um, there's a statement here, an if statement, so when the brightness is equal to zero or 255, which of course are the minimum and maximum values, it makes the fade amount equal to minus the fade amount, which basically means um, that it, when it adds that value it actually takes away a value because adding a negative means that you're taking something away. So instead of fading up it fades down and then it reverses it at the bottom again. And there's a delay of 30 milliseconds which is between each increment of five so um, that uh, controls the speed of the fading up and down. And as I say, that whole thing is a loop, so it cycles forever. Fading all the way up, adding 5, adding 5 on each loop. Then when it gets to the bottom, reversing it. And the top, when it reverses it, so the LED fades up and down as it goes. And that just carries on forever. So I decided I want to do something a bit more interesting than just one LED fading on and off for my green light-up sections. So what you can see in this example is four LEDs and each one fading down and back up in turn. Um, and the original idea was to sort of make something that looks like a bubble thro flowing through liquid. Um, it's not quite that. Um, but basically we're going to take these outputs to these LEDs and distribute those all over the suit. So we should have uh, multiple sections in line with one section fading off, effectively travelling through them. So we'll stick another four LEDs on the end and then, of course, it will be um, two lots of that, so we'll have two LEDs off through a section of eight, or as many as we choose. So I've done this um, in a very similar way, with a similar piece of code. Again, we've got our Arduino Uno there. Um, the Arduino Uno is quite good. You can power quite a few LEDs off its outputs. I'm eventually going to have lots and lots of LEDs. So I'm using a ULN2803 Darlington driver, which is lots of high-power transistors in a package. So each... Um, transistor pair in that package will be able to source a current of half an amp so that's enough to power lots of LEDs off each segment. At the moment these LEDs are getting powered off the 5 volt output from the Arduino and there is actually a resistor on each LED. Eventually that won't be the case, they'll be powered straight from um, a LiPo battery with a different LED value and at the moment I'm just powering this whole thing off a USB boost adapter in the future that will be a LiPo battery as I say, so there will be some different wiring there for the power and some different resistor values. But let's have a look at the code to see how that works. 
So I've taken the original fade code and made a few modifications. So again, we um, declare our LED pin as pin 5. This time I'm starting with a brightness of 255, so uh, fully on instead of zero. And again, we've said the fade amount is 5. We've again declared that output pin, the uh, pin 5 is an output. And the loop is very similar, so it's writing the brightness out and then subtracting the fade amount and ping-ponging backwards and forwards if the brightness is 0 or 255 then it reverses. However what I've then done is added some additional code to shift it onto the next pin. So the pins I'm using for PWM they don't run in order unfortunately so they are 5, 6, 9 and 10 and a couple of others. So I'm using 5, 6, 9 and 10 in this example. So what I've said here is if the brightness is 255 and the LED pin is 5 then make the LED pin 6. So the next time it goes round, it shifts on to the next LED pin. Similarly, if it's 6, shift to 9. If it's 9, shift to 10. And if it's 10, shift back to 5. We've got again the delay there, um, which is in between each step. And I've made that 10 milliseconds, so it goes up and down a bit quicker. But I've added in an additional delay. If the brightness is 0, so if the LED is off, then wait 300 milliseconds, which is um, just under a third of a second. So that actually means the LEDs are held off for rather longer, so you can see the effect of the section turning off. And that whole thing is a big loop, so every time it fades up to 255, it shifts onto the next pin all the way around. And that continues forever, turning each LED off and on in order. So I'm probably going to start this with Alien's head, so if you can imagine these pots sort of inside there but all the way along and not in pot shape but other curved shapes so maybe kind of like eight sections in the head there we've got the arduino nano which is tiny and will just fit inside there and can control all of it we'll probably have another one in the body not sure if i'll have one on each side maybe one for each arm with each leg or something like that so it'd be quite good to get all the lights in sync though obviously these are tiny and fit anywhere and then have multiple sections obviously in green light up with some sort of uh, frontal lobe of the brain just inside there which will kind of fill out the structure we should get that sort of excellent warping effect as several sections turn off at once um, going back through the head there are quite a few sections that i want to color in green with light up pieces probably around the back of the head there's some pieces on the shoulders there where the shoulder bells join on and I need to do something about that and also the other arm and I'm planning on having a kind of stumpy arm that's been cut off perhaps with lots of green in so it'll have the upper arm the same as the right arm but then no hand and that'll give me an option to put a hand controller in so that I can activate all the functions there's also some things around the hips there where I'd like to fill them in with green parts the base of the tail and some other bits and pieces heading down the legs of course it doesn't have its stilts on at the moment Next time I'll be coming back with a roll of green tea glass and printing some of those sections for the head as I say and putting some lighting in to see what it looks like. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel to check out updates on this project and other projects and if you want to get hold of the 3D CAD files as well as the Arduino code that is available to my patrons who fund me on my Patreon campaign at patreon.com xrobots where you can get access to some exclusive rewards including a live broadcast with me and that's how all my projects get funded by my best followers. Alright that's all for now.